So you want to start live streaming, but you sound and look like this? Then this video is for you. Hi everyone, Sam here. Welcome back to another video. So today I want to show you how to set up a live stream. Recently I started doing much more live streams on my YouTube channel and I'm also streaming on Twitch uh, three times a week and it's a lot of fun and I got a lot of questions from you guys how to do these streams, especially how I can connect Skype to do interviews for example. So all of that we're going to discuss today and this video will be divided into uh, four chapters. And I put in some timestamps so you can jump to a specific topic that interests you. So the easiest way to start streaming is to use your phone. You can download, you know, the Instagram app, Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, and you can directly stream from the app. All you need is just your uh, little selfie camera here and every phone has a microphone. So it's very easy. So I won't go into the details here. I'm going to trust you to figure it out on your own. But what if you want to stream from your laptop or computer? Uh, then you would definitely need a broadcasting software. I can recommend OBS. It stands for Open Broadcaster Software. It's free. I have a link in the description for everything so you can download it for Mac and Windows. There are also some alternatives like vMix. Um, you can also use um, browser-based services like StreamYard, for example. I personally had some very good experience using StreamYard. Uh, it's very basic, but maybe this is enough for you. But I'm going to focus on OBS today. Okay, so this is OBS and I'm only going to focus on the basics, uh, the basic settings you need to set up to start streaming. If you want to know more about OBS, there are plenty of very good tutorials on YouTube. So first of all, let's go to settings, then to stream. And this is where you have to put in your streaming key. And that is very important because OBS needs to know, you know, where are you streaming? Are you streaming on YouTube? Are you streaming on Twitch or Facebook? You need to get the streaming key from the platform you are going to stream on. Okay, let me show you how you find your streaming key on YouTube. So go to your YouTube uh, channel, then go to the camera icon here on the top, click uh, go live. You will then be asked if you want to reuse the previous settings. Um, in this example, I'm going to start a new stream, then put in a title. And then I recommend that you schedule uh, your streams in advance, at least like two or three hours, so that uh, your followers or subscribers get uh, notified and then they have time to show up uh, when you go live. So then create a stream. So this is the dashboard of your live stream, but you are not live yet. But this is where you can find your streaming key. It's over here. Make sure to not give your streaming key away to other people because everyone who has your key can stream on your channel. Now we are back in OBS and all we need to do is just paste in the streaming key and we can now go live on YouTube. Okay, what about Twitch? Uh, let's quickly set up a Twitch stream. Go to your profile and then to settings. Then under channel and videos uh, is where you find your streaming key. Copy that, then go to the left to the menu and open a stream manager. So this again is the dashboard of your stream. Here you can see how many people are watching. Uh, you can see the chat and you can also edit your stream info. So you can put in a title. Okay, we are back again in OBS and we have the streaming key from Twitch copied and then uh, under service select Twitch and then paste in the streaming key. And by the way, you don't always need to do this every time you stream. Um, you can also save profiles. For example, here after profile, you can save a new profile for Twitch and for YouTube, for example, or Facebook. So technically we are now ready to stream. All we have to do is just click on the start streaming button. But of course we have no camera and microphone selected. So let's do that first. Um, to give you a quick overview of OBS. So you have this big window here on the top. This is your preview. Here you can see your webcam, everything you do. Uh, everything you're going to stream will show up here. And then down here below on the left side, we have scenes. You can look at scenes like separate rooms. For example, you have a Studio A, Studio B, Studio C. Um, let's say Studio A is you doing a solo show and then Studio B, you have a guest. 
and Studio C is um, you working on a software and you know showing your screen or something like that. So let's create a new scene and we will call it um, Solo Webcam. Okay. And then next to the scenes are the sources and sources are, you know, our media, uh, our camera, uh, could be pictures, a browser, you know, there are many things you can do here. Let's bring in uh, a webcam. So go to the plus icon here and the webcam you find under video capture device. You can also name your webcam. I'm just calling it a webcam from now on. Click OK. And here you can select your active cameras. So under device, um, let's choose FaceTime HD. This is my webcam. And you can also change the resolution. So now you have a webcam and you can move it around. You can also make it bigger and smaller. And there's a little tip for you. If you press Command F, uh, it will jump to full screen. On Windows, it would be Control F. You can also lock the position so you won't move it around accidentally. There's another neat trick I have to show you. Um, let's say you want to crop the webcam because you have another person in the stream and you want to put him on the right side and you want to, you want to get rid of all this space here. You can do so by holding down the Alt key and then grab one of these points and you can see that now I'm able to crop uh, the right side. And if you don't want to see your webcam, uh, just click on this eye icon and you can turn it off and on. And let's say you want to work on the contrast of your webcam or you want to change the saturation. You can do that if you right click on webcam and then you have filters down below. Now you can choose some effects. Uh, let's use color correction. Okay. Then you can change the gamma, the contrast, you know, saturation all that stuff uh, to make your camera look better. Now we made sure we have a webcam and videos working, but what about audio? So let's see, we have uh, our mixer area here and you can see here under mic, um, the mic level isn't moving. So that means OBS has no microphone activated. So let's go to settings and then under audio, you can now select, uh, you see here under mic, it says device not connected or not available. So mic here would be the mic that shows up here and what OBS. Um, so let's select a microphone. Uh, for this example, I'm, I'm just going to use, you know, the basic microphone from my iMac here, built-in microphone. Okay. And if we wait a little bit, we might see that the mic is working. Okay. Now you see here that the audio level is moving. We are now ready to start streaming. Uh, but before we do that, uh, a quick advice. Whenever you start a stream, start a quick recording first and listen to yourself. Listen if the audio is working. But before we do that, we have to go under settings and make sure uh, this, it's, it's set up uh, the right way. Go to output and uh, go to recording. And here you can set up uh, a recording format. I'm just going to leave it at MP4. Uh, I'm going to record in 1080p, um, everything else I'm just going to leave it like it is. Um, but one thing that's also important is um, streaming here under output. I'm streaming at 1080p right now. Uh, if you have uh, a slow internet speed, you might have to change this to uh, HD. Um, so just keep in mind that you know inter internet speed also affects your streaming output and of course how fast your laptop or computer is. Uh, I'm going to put in um, my specs here so you can uh, compare to your device. I also recommend that you don't use uh, Wi-Fi for streaming. Try to um, use a cable to connect directly to your router. That way your stream will be much more stable and probably a lot faster. Okay, I'm going to do a quick recording. So start recording. It's recording right now. So what's up everyone, welcome back to Welcome back. Now this is my first stream, so how does it sound? Okay, so that sounds okay. Uh, it does work. So we are now able to start streaming. I have to say one more thing. Uh, if you stream on Twitch, you just have to press uh, start streaming on OBS and it will go live on Twitch. But on YouTube, uh, you have to make sure that you click go live on the dashboard of your stream. 
And I can't tell you how many times I pressed start streaming on OBS and then I talked to myself. Sorry, everyone in the chat. Uh, we've been talking for, I don't know, at least five minutes. And, uh, <laughs> we found out that we forgot to press go live on YouTube. So make sure that you always click go live on YouTube as well. Okay, now you know how to stream using your webcam and your inbuilt microphone, but how do you get to the next level and get you know better audio and better video? Uh, we should look at microphones first because audio, I think, is much more important than a good camera. Because having shitty audio but you know beautiful looking video um, doesn't make much sense. See, if I use my webcam but I have very good audio, then people who watch my streams they are much more likely to excuse you know this mediocre looking uh, video quality if they get good audio. Okay, I'm now going to show you some affordable microphone options, uh, but please keep in mind that I bought all of these mics uh, for the purpose of shooting YouTube videos. Like here, for example, I'm using uh, microphones on top of my cameras and they are not really made um, to be used for podcasting or streaming. Uh, but they do work and I think they work very well. And maybe you have a mic like that at home and this is all you got. And I want to show you how you can make that work for your streams. So the first microphone is the Zoom H1 recorder. This is a piece of equipment that I think was the best investment I ever made. Uh, I got this when I was starting out. It must have been 2008 or 9 or 10. Um, so it's been used quite a lot. And this is not really a microphone that you would use for streaming. Um, and that is because it has a stereo mic, so it will pick up a lot of the background noise. Um, it's not ideal to, you know, do voiceovers, but it does work. It is 100 bucks or so. Um, there's a new version. This is the old version. The new version, I think it's almost the same. And what's great about the Zoom H1 is that uh, you can plug in any microphone that has a 3.5 a connection you can control your audio levels here on the side uh, you can put in some headphones and this is what i connect first to my computer or laptop when i want to use a microphone and that is because microphones they they might work when you just plug them directly into your laptop or computer um, but most of them don't and if they work you have no connection for your headphones anymore so you can't really monitor your audio um, and sometimes you need some additional software to make it work so having a recorder like the Zoom H1 uh, does make life definitely easier. One thing to notice if you're planning to use this on a Mac, uh, when you plug it in to your computer, it will ask you if you want to access the card or use, use it as a microphone. And it says audio. When it says audio, press the record button and then it will ask you for the frequency. And right now it's at uh, 40, 44 kilohertz. And I found that on OBS, on Mac, I don't know, maybe it's just for me, I have to uh, change it to 48 kilohertz. Uh, if I don't do that, my voice will sound very low in the stream. And this is one way to fix it. On Windows, I can just use 44 kilohertz uh, without any issues. This is how the Zoom H1 sounds, by the way. So if I go really close, I have very good audio, right? And because this is a stereo mic, if I move to the left or the right, you can still hear me very loud. Um, but when I go back, I will be much quieter and it doesn't sound as nice anymore. So for the Zoom H1, you really need to be very close. It's a little bit sensitive. You see, if I move my little tripod, it picks up a lot of the noise that comes from the tripod. The same when I touch it and hold it, it's really hard to not get any, you know, clicking noises. So for me, it's not the best option to use as my main mic, uh, but I'm using it to connect other mics onto it. If you want to be a little bit more professional, you would probably get an audio interface and then you have you know, more connections and they, ha they have some specific features that help, like a limiter, for example. If, you, uh, if your audio is peaking with this, uh, you have to manually cor correct it. But if you would have a limiter in, in an audio interface, uh, it would prevent you from peaking. So this makes it a little bit more professional. But in most cases, if you are always at the same distance, um, it's pretty easy to, to use um, the Zoom H1. Another option is the Rode uh, Lav mic. This is the Smart Lav Plus. This microphone you can uh, put on your shirt like so. And this is how it sounds. So this is the Rode uh, Smart Lav Plus. 
Uh, it's, it's a good lavalier mic. I use this a lot for interview shoots. やっぱりそのストレートフォトをすごく大切にしたいので。Uh, sound very well outside, outdoors. Um, now I'm very close, so now I'm going to put it onto my shirt. And you can already hear the difference, right? I'm not that clear anymore. And I'm raising the gain to almost 90 now. This is definitely way too much. And if I stop talking, you hear the noise in the background. I think that's okay. See, now it sounds okay. Uh, maybe this was too far away. See, it, it already makes a difference just having it here compared to here. I feel like this one for streaming is a little bit uh, quiet, a little bit low on the volume side, and I feel like it's a little bit too bassy. And I think this is around 40 bucks, uh, must be a little bit more. And you need to make sure to, if you want to get this one, that you get this um, TRRS to TRS adapter. Don't ask me what that means, but without that, you won't be able to use it together with the Zoom uh, H1. And I've tested this uh, using this one directly into uh, my computer or laptop, and it's okay. It's not the best solution. I would still use a Zoom H1 because you have more control. Next, we have a very popular mic, the Rode Video Micro. Um, many YouTube vloggers are using this microphone. It's actually very, very good. I'm very surprised how well it sounds. Um, it's cheap. I think the price is like 40 to 50 bucks. Um, so very affordable, uh, very small microphone, it has a nice uh, shock mount, and you can also put um, the cable uh, here on the mount and then it doesn't wiggle as crazy. Um, but yeah, very good audio quality, not really a shotgun mic. It's marketed as a shotgun mic, but it's not really a true shotgun mic. So compared to my main mic, the Aperture DAD3, um, this one is much more directional. So when I am talking from here, you can't really hear me, but when I'm in front of the mic, you can hear me loud and clear. And this one doesn't do that that well, but it's actually a very good option. You're now listening to the Rode Video Micro and it does sound very good, but I'm also holding it very close to me. And I also realized that um, I cannot use my little tripod because the tripod uh, mount is not, uh, it doesn't fit. It's a little bit bigger, this one. So unfortunately, you won't be able to use a simple tripod. You might have to get some kind of adapter. Um, yeah, but how does it sound for you guys? Uh, I feel like if you have it close to yourself, you can definitely use it for podcasting, po podcasting. And here you can hear uh, one of the downsides of using a microphone that is not made for podcasting or live streaming, that, you know, these P and T sounds, they sound very uh, sharp. Usually you, you would use something like a pop filter. Um, so maybe you have to use the microphone more like this. So when I say T, P, 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 uh, it's better to have the mic on the side. So it's not ideal. And I feel like this microphone is only good once you are very close to it. So last but not least, we have my main microphone. It's the Aperture DAD3. Um, not this, this is the package. Um, so here it is. This is the Aperture DAD3. Uh, traditional shotgun mic that you put on the camera. But I think it does work very well for streaming. Uh, I like the pickup pattern. It's very directional. It runs on a battery though, so you need to be careful and make sure that you always have a, a full battery. Uh, I think when you stream every day for two hours, You might have to change batteries after two months. So it's not really a big deal. Very good value for the money. Uh, it's I think 120 euros maybe or less. Yeah, I really like the audio quality. It does sound a little bit sharper than the Rode Video Micro that you are listening to now. And this is how it sounds. So you already know how it sounds because I was using it the whole time. Uh, you can hear I'm very clear and loud. Even if I go back, I still, you know, I'm, you can hear me loud and clear. And I think it's the perfect mic for me right now because I can leave it up here even if I put it, you know, over here and raise the gain a little bit. I can do stuff and uh, it, will, it will always sound good. Uh, of course, the closer you are, the better the sound. Um, but I feel like this one does a very good job uh, creating a nice, rich sound compared to my other mics. Maybe this is a good opportunity to also show you that uh, you can also enhance the audio quality or you know make it sound a little bit better. If you right click here under mic, go to filters, 
you'll see that I have a few, um, you know, I have uh, some plugins, some presets. Uh, I, I'm going to activate those. And now, how does it sound? Does it sound a little bit better? I think it sounds a little bit richer. And what I was using is this um, plugin called Marvel GEQ. I'm going to put a link in the description. Uh, it's a free plugin. And you see I have these uh, sliders and they have presets. So now I'm using bright, brighter and bassy, but I, but I could also use, you know, lo-fi. How does that sound? I can change it to um, ultra bass boost. And let's go back to brighter and bassy. Let me show you the rest. I have this compressor. I have no idea what that all does, but I copied this from another YouTuber. So um, maybe you can copy the same settings. And then we have noise suppression, which is kind of like, you know, noise reduction on photos. Uh, we always have some noise in the background. And if I don't talk, you can definitely hear some noise. And if I use noise suppression and let's go down to minus 20. It's almost completely quiet, right? And I use this at around 10, uh, sometimes 15. So yeah, you can do things like that and make your audio sound better. So don't give up if your microphone doesn't sound great. There are ways to make it sound a little bit better. One important thing I forgot to mention is uh, when we are using an external video source like this camera and a separate audio source, which we are not feeding into the camera, right? Uh, we might have some uh, audio and video sync issues. Um, to compensate for that, we have to uh, click on the settings icon here uh, under advanced audio properties uh, where our mic is. And you can already see I put in a value here for sync offset. And that means that my audio is now starting a little bit later, but it is perfectly in sync with my video source. That wouldn't be an issue if you would uh, plug in a microphone on your camera. Then it would be in sync, for example. Okay, now we talked a lot about audio, but how can I make my video look better? How can I use any camera for streaming? And it's very simple. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Uh, I'm using a uh, Canon C100 at the moment, which is a little bit overkill. Uh, it was a camera that I was using for uh, when, when I was still doing videos for other people. So let me show you. This is my uh, streaming setup at the moment. I have a simple LED that is bouncing against the ceiling. It's a, it's a little bit overkill, but you know, it, the image, the video does look nice, but I think I have to maybe sell that one and get a cheap camera because you can use any camera. You can use a mirrorless like this Fuji, for example, because all you need is an HDMI uh, port. And then uh, what I use is the Camlink 4K from Elgato. Uh, this is a very popular option. It's very simple. It's just a simple USB adapter where you can uh, where you plug in a HDMI cable. Um, so all you need to make sure is that you have an HDMI cable that can also plug in into your camera. So as you can see, I can use my Ricoh GR and uh, actually autofocus, everything works. Uh, the problem is on the GR here, for example, um, it doesn't have uh, something called, you know, clean HDMI out, which means it doesn't send out a clean signal directly from the uh, sensor. That's why you have the interface also showing up. Uh, you know, this is actually very good if you want to show something on the camera, you know, if you want to demonstrate how the menu works, uh, you could really film like tutorials using uh, the cam link. If you're not sure if your camera is compatible or not, uh, you can go to Elgato's website. I will link it down below. They have a list of cameras that are working. So unfortunately, I can't test it on my GoPro, even though I have the media mod, which includes uh, an HDMI connection, but I don't have the right cable. Uh, so make sure you have the right cable. Uh, what's important is that you have a full HDMI um, to go into the cam link and then on the other side uh, whatever you need for your camera. Okay, let's say you successfully connected a camera to a computer using the cam link 4K. How do we now find our external camera? Uh, remember when we set up the webcam, we did go to video capture device, right? You can also just double click on your webcam and then change it here under device. Now we have cam link 4K. And we are now able to stream using our beautiful HD camera and stream like a pro. 
Okay, so I wanted to make this video very simple and basic, but maybe you are ambitious like me and you want to connect two or three cameras at the same time. Uh, before you go out and buy a bunch of these guys, maybe it's not a bad idea to invest in something like this. This is the Blackmagic ATEM Mini. Uh, this is a very powerful uh, broadcasting tool. First of all, we get four camera inputs, so four HDMI ports, one HDMI out for recording, for example. Uh, we have two microphone inputs, and then everything goes out via USB cable as a webcam. So for example, you could hook up three different cameras and also your laptop for, let's say, a PowerPoint presentation. And you can use that for Skype or Zoom, for example. And you don't need to share your screen on your computer. You can just switch between, you know, your laptop presentation and then yourself. There's also picture and picture feature, so you can switch to a different camera angle and then still have you in the corner. There are also some cool transition effects. You can just do a simple cut, um, but you can also do uh, a wipe. And the price of these are actually very good. I think this is around 280 bucks or so. Uh, compared to this, you know, this makes a lot of sense if you are planning to only use one camera. Um, yeah, then this is cheaper. But if you buy two or three of these, you pay around $400. So this one is actually cheaper, but gives you four uh, camera inputs, two microphone inputs, and it's also a switcher. So it's definitely a good option if you want to do more professional streams. Okay, let's talk a little bit about lighting. Uh, I will be short because I don't have that much light equipment, but of course you want to make sure that you have good lighting. And if you're blessed like me and you have, you know, big windows in your apartment, then, you know, great, you can use daylight. But what about during the night or when it gets dark? How can you stream and still have a clean uh, looking image? Let me pull down the curtains to make this dark. Okay, now you see it's very dark and what I'm using is just one simple LED which sits on top of my camera and let me get this real quick. And this is a LED from uh, Aperture. I think it's called the uh, Aperture Amaran ALH198. It's a daylight temperature LED. And this is everything I have right now. So I have to make the best out of it. And usually I'm using it and uh, bounce it against the ceiling you see that now I have some even light in my apartment. I have another warm light in the background, which gives me some uh, color separation, color contrast. Um, this is all I got, you know? I wish I had a big, huge softbox. Ooh, that looks like a studio. <laughs> but this is all I have. I should probably invest in better light, but you don't need uh, expensive lighting equipment. So just to give you an idea that a simple LED uh, might be enough. All right, so now you have a beautiful camera, great audio, you know how to stream. But what if you want to invite a guest, you know, maybe you want to interview someone. I personally use uh, Skype for that. And in order to do that, you need to download a plugin called uh, NewTek NDI. So once you install the plugin, uh, open up Skype and go to settings. And then under calling, click on advanced. And here you find allow NDI usage. Make sure that that is turned on. Then we go back to OBS. And then now under sources, you find NDI source. So that wasn't there before. So you have to install the plugin first to see this. Let's click on that. And I already have a few people here that I had on my show. Okay, let's say I want to bring in Jason again. Uh, I already have him here. So let's double click on him. Uh, here on the source name, you see that Jason is selected. If you would have a live call right now, you will find your guests here. And now under mixer, we also have a new audio source. For here, for example, Jason is muted at the moment. If I want to allow him to speak on my stream, uh, I will bring up here the audio level and now he will be able to speak on my stream. Of course, I also need to make sure that he is visible on the screen. You know, I could do that by making myself smaller. Or I could, uh, if I would be Jason right now, you know, I could put him in the corner, for example. So this is all the stuff you can do in OBS. If you don't want to use Skype, there are some alternatives. Uh, my personal favorite is Jitsi Meet. On Jitsi Meet, you don't really need an account. You can just send a link and everyone can join you. And you can use that, for example, here I am in a call right now. 
um, but I'm alone at the moment. But if I would open OBS right now, uh, how I would incorporate Jitsi Meet into OBS would be um, to open up a, a window capture. This is how you um, can incorporate, uh, for example, a browser. And because Jitsi Meet is browser based, um, I should be able to find it here. So here we have Google Chrome Jitsi Meet. And you can see, um, because I'm the only one in the call, uh, it will be just me. But this is how you could bring someone in uh, without Skype. But in terms of audio, you need to make sure that desktop audio is working. And at the moment you see nothing comes up. And the thing is here, if you use Windows, for example, uh, there's no issue. You can just, it just works. <laughs> but on Mac, it doesn't really work out of the box. You need to um, download something that it's, that's called a multi-output device. Okay, quick tutorial how to set up multi-output device on Mac. Uh, first of all, you need to download this extension called Soundflower. After you installed Soundflower, go to your finder under Go to Utilities and then Audio MIDI Setup. Uh, you can see I already created a multi-output device. I'm going to do it again. Click on the plus icon, then create aggregate device. Then you can name it. So make sure to now check built-in output and Soundflower. And before you jump to OBS, uh, go to your system preferences. Open up your sound settings. And under output, you now find multi-output device. And you have to select that. And now you're able to listen and share audio coming from, let's say, a YouTube video with your audience on your stream. So we are finally at the end. Uh, this is it. I hope you found it useful. I wanted to make this video for everyone, you know, who wants to start streaming or, you know, who wants to increase the quality for live calls. Uh, I got a lot of requests from people, from friends uh, who wanted to know how to do this. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. I might be able to help you. Uh, I'm not an expert in doing live streams, as you can see. I made it work with what I've got. But if I was able to help one of you guys to, to, to stream, then, you know, I did my job. So thanks again for watching and I see you in the next video.